I'm Amin Issa, and uh, I'm a PhD here at the clinic. I do uh, research in biomedical engineering, physiology. So my family is originally from Lebanon. Both my parents are Lebanese, and uh, my, my grandparents uh, have a bit of Greek and Dutch heritage, but we're, we're Lebanese for all accounts. Uh, I lived there for uh, a large portion of my life, nine till 19, when I came back to do graduate studies here. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been here since then. Mayo has kind of uh, pulled me in. I, I'm a naturally curious person. I do whatever's fun. I, I, I don't tend to think in terms of what normal people would. I get criticized for that a lot, especially by my parents. <laughs> but um, so science is, is probably the peak of curiosity. You want to know why things work. You want to know why things do what they do. And um, for me, I was always interested in human performance when I was younger. I uh, would play soccer with a lot of the kids, and they were, and they were so much better. And uh, I also had the disadvantage of being younger than my class. I went through, I graduated high school at 15, just turned 15. So I couldn't compete athletically because while I was still going through puberty, everyone else had beards and larger bodies and could run fast. So I turned towards uh, mental uh, 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 competitiveness and I played video games competitively. And even there, I would want to know why people are good and what makes sense. So how do people think and how do they, why do they perform well? Is it a mental state? Is it planning ahead? And you know, is, uh, and that turned me a lot towards uh, a lot of the stuff I'm doing now. It's kind of evolved, but uh, I kind of stumbled upon the path because I chose to be a doctor to help people, but I realized I really didn't like anatomy and memorizing everything. I, I can't do that. I, it's just when I could open it right in front of me, I didn't see the point memorizing it. Um, and I tacked on the engineering part and said, let me figure things out. And I've been along this path. I've had some great mentors and guidance. And uh, the biomedical engineering has led me up to here where we're figuring out why uh, elite climbers do so well when they climb a mountain. Some of the work I'm doing now is developing a cognitive test that uh, uh, uses a, that's a, in the form of a video game that we'll be testing up on the mountain, which will be really cool. Uh, the other stuff is a, a bit uh, more trying to ingrain game elements or get people more engaged in learning and uh, in their own health care using games. And hopefully we'll, we'll be able to do that without bitchering the essence of having a good game, a real something that's fun to play and engaging. My focus, what I bring to the research project is uh, uh, the technical know-how of the devices that we're going to be using to monitor uh, the physiology of our crew climbing and the climbers who will be climbing up to the summit. Um, and uh, being able to take the data from those devices to offload it, to make sense of it. We're in an age where data is king and um, there's just too much data. If you ask a person what's the biggest problem in the data age, there's just too much and we don't know how to make meaning of it. So it almost becomes worthless. It's like when you're overflown with options on what to do, you don't know what to do and probably don't make a choice. So that's one aspect of it. Uh, and we'll be able to take that data to understand what is going on as someone goes up the various altitudes, how their body changes, how they acclimate, what differentiates this person on our team from this person on our team, from a climber, from maybe even a Sherpa. And to, to be able to monitor that is something that's just becoming uh, more robust. Uh, the big shout out to the group working here on the device that we'll be using, but we haven't been able to acquire such a high resolution of heart rate monitoring at, for such a long period of time. And, uh, and that'll be very novel to watch someone as they go up a mountain and then down the mountain and stay at the top of the mountain and acclimate. What's going on with their autonomic service, nervous system? What's going on with their heart? Uh, what are their physiological changes that we're looking at? The, the bottom line is that using the data, we can start to generate uh, algorithms, warning, uh, warning uh, alarms for 
heart failure patients, for sick people, for climbers who might uh, engage in, who might uh, come down with mountain sickness, we can start to see trends in the data and we can break that down so that we can predict or, uh, or flag certain people as being predisposed to, to harm. And uh, for me, the, the inner geek in me, it's really cool to just be able to see how an elite athlete's body handles a certain situation versus me and versus someone else. And what are the differences? Their heart rate doesn't strain when they're climbing the steep hill. What's going on? Who are these people, right? So that's, that's the part that gets, that's, gets me going. It's great to be able to, to save lives, but it's also very exciting to look at what a human body can do when it's pushed its limits. For me, the mountain is, is a, a challenge a, to explore myself, and it's something cool. And I'm all about doing something cool and challenging myself. And it's something I stumbled into. I, I really didn't know I was going to do a PhD in biomedical engineering until I did it. I didn't know I was going to uh, do a postdoc. Actually, I was completely opposed to the idea until Bruce asked me to do one with him. And uh, I never knew I was going to climb a mountain until they said, you're coming up to Everest. And so it's been um, just kind of go with the flow and see where, where life takes us. But it's a challenge I'm looking forward to. I'm very excited. And I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be able to do it.